I've teamed up with Seagate to give away a Fire Cuda 530 NVMe PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD to one of you watching this video right now. All the giveaway details are in the description down below to enter to win. Not a 500 gig model, not a one terabyte model. Nah, Seagate were very generous and sent me a two terabyte model and we're giving away the exact same two terabyte model to one of you over in Europe. So enter the giveaway down below. Let's get this thing unboxed and install it into the PC behind us. Now, some things I should mention about this SSD is that this is one of the fastest M.2 Gen 4 SSDs currently available, if not the fastest one on the market in late 2021. It's been around for, I think, just about six months at the time of recording this video, but it's still, I think, the one to beat in terms of performance and like overall durability. We have some stickers that it comes with. You also get these two booklets here, one of them being the Rescue Plus data recovery services that this drive comes with and a five-year limited warranty. If you have some unexpected data loss over the next three years, you're covered uh, as they have apparently an industry leading success rate against unexpected data loss of 95%. So if anything goes wrong and you just lose your data during the next three years of owning this drive, this company should get your data back. But the five year warranty is also a nice touch. You don't have to register it or anything. It just comes with the drive. Unlike some other companies, like I think Sabrent only offer like a one year warranty on some of their drives. And if you want to get like an extra four years of warranty, you have to register it. They just make it easy, it comes with a five year warranty and you know, you, you can move on with your life. The endurance rating of the Fire Cuda 530 SSD is also more than double what Samsung offer on, at the moment, their best SSD uh, being the 980 Pro. They only have a TBW, total terabytes written rating, of 600. With the Fire Cuda 530, 1,275 TBW rating. So they actually uh, put this thing into numbers because just saying like, oh, you can write 1,275 terabytes and delete it on the drive before you run into an issue. It's just like a bunch of numbers in it. To put it into some perspective that actually makes sense, on this Fire Cuda drive, you could write and delete 70% of the drive's total capacity every single day. That's 1.4 terabytes of data that you could write and delete every day for the next five years straight before you would run into an issue. So this definitely gives you some confidence in the endurance and durability of the drive. I'm gonna be switching this drive over to like my main system drive going forward. I'm gonna have Windows 11 finally freshly installed on this thing. And I'm gonna probably make a dedicated video about that because it's definitely gonna be a much longer one. I'm gonna show you guys how to install the cleanest version of Windows 11 in another video. Today, let's just set this thing up, benchmark it, see what it's all about. I've just gone ahead and removed my graphics card from the motherboard to give me easy access to the M.2 slots on the board. This board in particular, the X570 Godlike from MSI, has heat sinks for your M.2 drives already. In case your board doesn't have heat sinks, I do recommend you buy the heat sink version of this Fire Cuda 530. Uh, it's also compatible with the PS5, by the way. If you do get this drive for your PlayStation 5, get the heatsink version to keep the drive nice and cool. Installing an M.2 drive is of course super easy. Just poke it into the M.2 slot like this. Then you can lower it and screw it down. Or what I'm gonna do is just attach the heatsink back on like this and then screw it down like that. And that's it, we can pop the graphics card back in and uh, boot the PC up. It's, uh, it's that simple. No cables required, nothing. That is why I really like M.2 drives. They make life easy. You know, you just pop it into the slot and you're done. That's it, mate. <laughs> but how long does it take to actually get into Windows after you press that power button? So I've already installed Windows 11 on this SSD. Off camera, I have Quite a few startup applications as well. So this isn't a you know completely clean install of Windows. Well, it is, but with startup applications as well. Now, generally at around the 20 second mark, you will get into the BIOS and then between six to 10 seconds later, we should get into Windows. So this time at around 28 seconds, 
we were already in Windows. Now, this is with my current system configuration. I have a Ryzen 9 3950X CPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and I'm on the MSI X570 godlike motherboard. Those are the real specs that are actually gonna affect the boot up time. But if I, let's say, were on the 5950X CPU from AMD, the boot up time might be ever so slightly better. On top of that, if I was maybe on Intel instead of AMD, the boot up time might be even better than what I've managed to achieve here today. So your mileage may vary depending on your own system configuration. With my one, I'm pretty happy with 28 seconds. Bear in mind we have a bunch of startup applications, including Razer, we have MSI Center, a bunch of other little apps like Spotify and everything running in the background the moment the PC starts up. When it came to restarting the PC, I got anywhere from 39 seconds, being around the best time I got, to maybe around 44, 45 seconds, the moment you press the restart button until you're back into Windows, which is pretty good, bearing in mind once again, this is with a bunch of startup applications. I also timed how long it takes to start up Counter-Strike on two different SSDs, the Fire Cuda 530 from Seagate and the T-Force Team Group Cardea Z440. Both of these are two terabyte PCIe Gen 4x4 SSDs, so they're very comparable. On the Cardea Zero, it took an average of 32.73 seconds to start up CSGO. Whereas on the Fire Cuda, we got an average of 32.03 seconds to start up CSGO. I also ended up timing how long it takes to start an offline CSGO Dust 2 map the moment you press start match to when you're in game and you can play. On average, it took 24 seconds for this drive, the Cardia Zero, to get into game, whereas the Fire Cuda actually dropped that number by quite a bit to 21.73 seconds. So over two seconds of a difference of how long it actually took to get into a game, which is an improvement. Although bear in mind, this is an offline server that we're starting. What I thought would be cool to compare as well is the advertised speeds of three of my M.2 drives that I have here versus what you actually got. So. Over on the right, we have the Adata XPG SX8200 Pro 1TB SSD. This is a PCIe Gen 3x4 SSD using the NVMe 1.3 standard. This drive advertises a read and write performance of 3500 on the read and then 3000 megabytes per second on the write. We got around 3200 megabytes per second on the read and around 2500 megabytes per second on the write. Slightly below what is advertised, but nearabouts there. On my previous main system drive, the Team Group Z440 Cardea, two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 by four NVMe 1.3 standard SSD, this is the results it got. Now this drive advertises 5000 megabytes per second on the read, which we pretty much achieved bang on nothing wrong there and then 4400 megabytes per second on the right now this drive ran into some problems and i actually dug into this a little bit more and turns out i'm not the only one having this issue with this ssd the drive didn't manage to maintain its right performance with a heavier workload uh, i ran a test in the middle here with a one gigabyte file and then a 16 gigabyte file is on this top row right here on the 16 gigabyte file, the write performance dropped from 4,200, which is right about what is advertised, to just under 1,000 megabytes per second. And I ran this crystal disk mark test over and over again because I thought something was maybe going wrong with the test. But every single time I put the heavier workload of 16 gigs, it dropped in performance pretty much every single time. When it came to the two terabytes Fire Cuda 530 from Seagate, this one is on PCIe Gen 4x4, but it's using the new NVMe 1.4 standard. It's advertised maximum read speed on this drive. Now this is sequential read speed is 7,300 megabytes per second. And then the advertised max sequential write speed is 6,900 megabytes per second. We actually achieved Above what is advertised on the read, which I didn't even think we would hit above 7,000 megabytes per second, mainly because I thought maybe my 3950X from AMD just won't be able to pull those kind of numbers off and I'd probably need like a 5950X in order to really make the most of this drive. I was proven wrong as we actually blew above what is advertised on the max sequential read 
by between 50 megabytes per second and up to like 78 megabytes per second more than what is apparently the maximum potential of the drive. When it came to the right though, we were just slightly below, but this is probably like margin of error type stuff, you know, 6,872 was the best score. I of course also ran some tests to test the endurance of the drive and see if we do a larger file size on Crystal Disk Mark, will this make any kind of an impact on the write performance, similar to what we saw with the Team Group SSD, where under a heavier workload, the write performance was like one fourth of what it should be. When it came to the Firecuda 530, we have zero changes in performance despite the heavier workload. Since I installed Windows 11 on this Firecuda 530, I'm no longer on the Windows 11 inside of program builds. Instead, I'm on a normal stable copy of Windows 11 finally. And I've been tweaking the OS as much as I possibly can to make Windows 11 less terrible, all right? Some of the tweaks that I've recently made include when you try to search in the you know normal Windows search, you no longer get web results. This was so difficult to get right because you have to go through like three or four different tutorials in order to actually prevent Microsoft from searching on the web. And I also installed this cool application where it adds like an updated look for when you adjust your volume, as well as for like Spotify and whatever kind of like music or audio is playing in the background, it now looks a little bit more modern. And I think I've seen some other people also advertise this plugin. It's completely free to download. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below to this one. You can download it yourself. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Those aren't the only two tweaks I did to Windows 11. Like I said, I'm gonna make a dedicated video showing you everything else I did to make the OS feel more snappy, more responsive, better performance overall in another video. So stay tuned for that one. Until now, enter to win the giveaway for the Firecuda 530 two terabytes SSD, and I'm gonna see you guys in another video soon. Goodbye.